declare victory and this is trying to be camp meeting preaching and and we've talked about declaring victory over over temptation and declaring victory over worry and tonight if you're in a storm or facing a storm we're going to declare victory over our storms Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 through 27 I want you to stand with me as we read the word of the Lord tonight Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 through 27. And again, Brother Blue, if you can give me a little more monitor tonight, that'll help me in the camp meeting preaching. Amen. <laughs> After I've sung and played the piano and, and all of that and stand up to preach, I need all the help I can get. Amen. <laughs> Thank God for technology. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I do appreciate uh, Brother Ray. And uh, I do remember back in 2017, I'd only been here about a year. I, and, uh, you know, I said, Lord, I really, really want to know where you have me, and, and I need some help in the music. And, and um, I remember I was praying in my car, and uh, I was parked outside my house, and, and I was just praying. And then I looked out my rearview mirror, and Brother Ray had pulled up to bring me something because he lived right close by. I said, well, Lord, that, and he's been here ever since. Amen. And I'll tell you, that's an answer to prayer. Thank you, Brother Ray. I love you and your family. Give him a big hand. Amen. A big, big blessing to us. And, and Brother Cooper has come along, we, and Brother Bill didn't sing when I got here, but you can't stop him from singing now, amen. Going down the hall, when he vacuums the floor, he's singing, amen. Um, I do want to tell you while I got your undivided attention, and I, I, I know Sunday school, and I, I didn't think about it until after the fact, as a music pastor and different things, and, but uh, we want to do a choir special next Sunday morning, uh, and I do need the choir to come on out a little bit after 10, so if, if some of you Sunday school teachers will kindly uh, dismiss your students, and, and you can chide me afterwards because I forgot about that, didn't think about it, uh, that it might be a conflict there, but I don't really know a better time to get everybody together, and if you can excuse us this one Sunday, uh, and it's not their fault, it's my fault, all right? I'll go to the whipping post for you, amen, <laughs> but, uh, and take all those, uh, all those uh, wrongs from those Sunday school students slipping out a few minutes early, but we do need to practice and uh, get the CD right so that uh, we can have a good special next Sunday morning. We're going to be singing the song, Is He Worthy, amen, and I'll tell you, He is worthy, amen, amen. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23, if you're there, say Amen. And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but I'm covered in the blood, amen? <laughs> but he was asleep, and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he, then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Father, help us to declare, vic to declare victory over the storms, uh, and we'll give you the praise tonight in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Turn around and tell somebody you're declaring victory, and you may be seated tonight. Well, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Just a few days ago, out of nowhere, an unexpected storm came in Nash County. Property was damaged. Some of our loved ones were affected. My brother-in-law, my sister Jennifer, her husband, got in his car. He works at the Pfizer plant there. He got in his car to drive away for a few moments for a break. When he came back, where his car was sitting was a shipping container that would have crushed it. So even in the storms, God is still God. Amen. Thank God no lives were lost. Can we applaud that? Can we praise God? that he kept his hand, but as quick as it came, it left. 
And that's the sort of storm we find in our text tonight because Jesus had told his disciples, let us get into a boat and let's go to the other side. In verse Matthew chapter 8, verse 24, on their way, behold, there arose a great storm in the sea insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. That word tempest, we translate storm. It actually is the Greek word that we get the word seismograph from. You know what a seismograph is? It is that instrument that measures. Uh, the vibration of the earth, uh, uh, the Richter scale, and those things. Uh, so we understand that the, this this storm was a very violent storm, a very uh, storm that had, that shook them and and uh, quaked them, uh, and it was a violent shaking. Uh, and while they were on the ship uh, and during the storm, uh, Jesus was there. Amen. Uh, I said, "The Lord is in the house tonight. Uh, we're having camp meeting because uh, the great I." Am is in the house and we're going over tonight amen I don't care what storm you're facing praise God we're declaring victory over the storms can somebody say amen tonight I'll tell you, this is uh, the Fourth of July was this month, and they had to they had to declare victory uh, before they got the victory. Amen. Uh, they had to declare independence uh, before they got independence. Praise God! Uh, you got to declare victory over the storm, uh, even if the waves are come slapping you in the face. Uh, if they're slapping you in the face, you slap back. Amen. Uh, and say, "I'm declaring victory." Put your hand together and declare victory over your storm. Hallelujah! Oh, give him a wave offering tonight. The master's on the ship, and we're not going down tonight. Hallelujah! He is in the house. Hallelujah. I want to give you three things tonight. Number one, the storm and their, mm, I feel it, the destination. The destination. Look at Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. And tell your neighbor you're going places. Amen. Uh, <laughs> Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. And the same day when evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. That was a, a directive uh, uh, telling them what to do. But it was also, Sister Maureen, a prophetic word. Let us go over to the other side. He wasn't just telling them what to do. He was giving them a glimpse of their future. Praise God. He has a destination for you. He has a place he wants to take you. Amen. He's got an anointing on your life. You are going places. When he says you're going over, brother, I don't care what the storm says, the doctor says, the tax man says, you are going over. I might just cut a shine here tonight. I feel like we're headed somewhere in Jesus' name. Somebody give him praise here tonight. Tell somebody God has a plan for your life. Tell them and you're going somewhere. And the only way you can, the only way you won't get there is if you bail out. And brother, we got a lot of people bailing out these days. Oh, there's a storm in the church. I'd rather deal with a storm in the church than a storm out there in the world. I'd rather be on that boat with a storm than out there uh, on a sunshiny day on the shore if that's where the Lord wants me. Amen. You are safer in the will of God than you'll ever be in your own will. Amen. And I say safe in a sense that doesn't mean it might not be some storms. Doesn't mean it might not be some challenges. But there's a destination. Hallelujah. We're going over to the other side. You see, the disciples should have known the word. That's where we mess up. We need to know the Bible verse by verse. Amen. That's why I love verse by verse. Because they they if they had really, really had put it in their mind, uh, you see, God had already said a word about that. He's already got a word about your situation. With his stripes, uh, you are healed. He's already given you a word. Uh, this is the word of the Lord, verse by verse, well, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Mm. What do you mean, Pastor? Look at Psalm 107, verse 29. Psalm 107, verse 29. I feel like a kid that's eating a bunch of hot candy. Amen. <laughs> he just, he's on fire. Amen. What are those hot things you put in your mouth? I forgot the name of them. Yeah, that. <laughs> 
fireballs, <laughs> ushers, uh, get me some, go to Walmart, get me some fireballs uh, and pass them out, amen, and tell everybody it's sweet to taste, amen, and don't tell them it's a fireball, and let's get these people moving, amen. <laughs> Psalm, this will get you moving, Psalm 107 and 29, listen, here they are, they had Jesus, the living word, but they also had the written word. What they should have done is let Jesus sleep. <laughs> Amen. He was a human. That's a, that's a side sermon for another day. This proves that he was fully man. He wasn't half God and half man. He was all God, but he was also man. And as God, he never slept nor slumbered. But as a man, he's like you. He took a Sunday afternoon nap. I know you did. How many of you took a Sunday? Don't raise your hand. You took a Sunday afternoon nap. <laughs> you are sleeping, <laughs> laying before the Lord. What did they call it in uh, Hispaniola? They were taking a siesta. Hallelujah. But listen, Psalm 107 and 29, he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves are still. Verse 30, then are they glad because they be quiet, so he bringeth them to their desired haven. Verse 31, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works unto the children of men. And there he is, the storm is blowing water and waves are coming on the shore. Oh, instead of waking up Jesus, they should have arisen faith in their own spirit and should have claimed the word that God had already spoken. Hey, guys, Jesus said we're going to the other side. Look at Psalm 107. And, uh, he said he'll make the storm a calm uh, and it'll be quiet. Uh, oh, let's praise the Lord in this storm. Let's declare victory. Let's declare victory. Amen, somebody. You see, God actually leads us at times to a storm. Now, if you're on an airplane, your pilot can tell if there's a storm and usually can fly around at least they better or if you're on one of the ships out in the sea with advanced radar they're not going to go directly in the middle of a storm but our God for whatever his purpose is his divine sovereign purposes are sometimes leads us uh, to a storm uh, remind you of the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 28. I don't have the reference, but God told him, he said, Paul, you're going to Rome to stand before Caesar. Sort of like what he told the disciples. You're going over to the other side. But when you go back to Acts 28, three things happened. Don't go there. I'm just giving you, this is another sermon for another day. There was a slow sail. It took them forever. Has anybody... Is that where you are right now? <laughs> Some of you are in a slow sail. It is that prayer is just not answering fast enough, seemingly. I mean, those children are just seemingly getting worse. And I've prayed and fasted, and now they've come up and said they're going to do this. And, and you're like, we're, we're in a slow sail sometimes, uh, and we want to hurry things up. Listen, God works on his time clock, not yours. Amen. He, hallelujah. And see, he not only had a slow sail, but he actually had a ship wrecked. The ship actually wrecked. But God spoke to him and said, you're going to Rome, but the ship is wrecking. And every now and then, a ship will wreck. But you know what Paul said? Paul said, look, there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord. He said, as long as you don't abandon the ship, you might have to hang on to a broken board and a broken piece. But if you'll hang on to the ship, the good old God ship. I've got good news to bring. I'm here to sing about I'm going to take a trip. Hallelujah. And this trip ain't going to flounder. This is not Ocean Gate, brother. We're not going to implode, praise God. We're going over to the other side. But sometimes your car will break down. Amen. Sometimes you'll have a fender bender. Amen. Sometimes your best friend will stab you in the back, throw you under the bus. I told a preacher friend of mine, I said, brother, your cologne smells like axle grease. I, he said, what? I said, yeah, because you threw me under the bus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> 
We had fun. We had fun. <laughs> we had fun. Hallelujah. <laughs> We had fun. But listen, there are times when what you're, oh, what the Lord uses, sometimes it don't work out. But that's all right. Paul had a slow sail. He had a shipwreck. And then he had a snake bite. Mm -hmm. You remember he was reaching down in the fire. Serpent latched onto him. And all of those heathens around there was like, well, he's getting ready to die. And that's what the world is looking at the church. And bless God, we're going to do LGBTQ, or if not, you're going to die. You know what I say? I'm shaking that mess off. Amen. Hallelujah. I walk into a department store, and they got all this stuff in my face. I'm shaking it off. You say, well, what about Cracker Barrel? Brother, they got it at Cracker Barrel. I won't have another biscuit. I'll shake it off in the name of Jesus. I'm not taking my family there. I'm not taking my money where they put it in your face, uh, and they think we're going to die. No, this is the church's finest hour. We are going to declare victory over the storm. Uh, I wish somebody would give him praise uh, in this house tonight. <laughs> I'm declaring victory. Oh, hallelujah. I'm shaking. Somebody needs to shake that offense off. You need to shake that hurt off. You need to shake sin off. You need to shake those uh, temptations off. And where did he shake it? He shook it in the in the fire. Oh, give us some Holy Ghost fire. Brother, we're going to get to the other side. We'll just shake it off into the fire. I told you God will take you sometimes to the storm, but <laughs> he is absolutely going to take you through the storm. God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. He plants his foot on every wave, and he rides every storm. Brother, you're going to get to your promised destination. Celebrate it by giving the Lord a hand of praise tonight. And by the way, let me just throw a little extra preaching in here that He's going to get me to my promised destination. But this also can refer to my eternal destination. Gee, I've said this in many funerals. That when evening came, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. There's coming a day in our earthly bodies when the sun will set for the last day. And for Ricky Nelms or whoever, it will be said, evening came. But I'll tell you, friend, the end of the day... Here is just the beginning of a day tomorrow. And I will for my eternal destination. I'm going to cross old chilly Jordan. Oh, for I am now ready to be offered, Paul said in 2 Timothy 4 and 6. Oh, for the time of my departure, 2 Timothy 4 and 6, is at hand. Did you, did you know that word departure is a nautical term in the Greek, meaning what you would say pertaining to sea travel. And that is true for the eternal sense. We're going to leave here, but brother and sister, we're going to meet over on the other side. Can you praise God that through the storm of death, <laughs> through even the storm of death, praise God, we're going over to the other side side where the roses never fade the shimmering shining sea of that celestial city where the wicked cease their troubling and the weary are at rest somebody say the word destination amen the storm is not going to keep you from your destination number two notice their desperation let me get back to the boat and to the moment um they were in a desperate situation there's a tv show on it talks about desperate housewives where these were desperate uh, sea husbands, <laughs> amen. They were desperate. Uh, notice that Jesus was asleep. And that ought to tell you something right there. If they should have kind of, I know in a storm you don't think right. When, when it, wind is blowing your face and, and it's, you know, category six, five coming your way. Six, oh, Lord, hope not. But if it comes your way, <laughs> Sometimes you're not thinking right. They should have stopped all their panicking and thought, guys, where's Jesus? Well, he's asleep. Well, that ought to have told them something. I mean, if Jesus is sleeping, why didn't they go to sleep, you know? 
if he's not worried about it, why am I worried about it? <laughs> Can I get a witness out there? Look, some, uh, somebody had a T-shirt, and it said this. It said, I am a bomb maker. If you see me running, you might want to try to catch up. Well, let me tell you something. He was not worried. Somebody said God is not sitting in heaven wringing his hands. And neither is the Holy Trinity in an emergency session. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Listen, they were looking at Jesus through the storm when they should have been looking at the, the storm through the eyes of their creator and their God, Jesus. Let me repeat that. They were looking at Jesus through a storm. Why, Jesus? When they should have been looking at Jesus and let him and through that see the storm. You need to see your storm through the eyes of God. You need to see your situation through the through the word of the Lord he's already said uh, you need to quit looking at the fo fo Fox News and CNN and you're seeing the world the way the news media says uh, the, what the doctor says and that might be a true thing uh, uh, but at the end of the day it was true they were in a storm uh, but they were looking at Jesus through the storm saying he's asleep uh, when they should have been looking at Jesus with his eyes closed and said why don't we do the same thing why don't we just rest and trust uh, in him uh, and put my desperation uh, on him can you say man look at this in Matthew uh, uh, 8 and 25 uh, the disciples came to him and awoke him and said Lord save us we perish Matthew 8 and 25 his disciples came and awoke him saying Lord save us we perish now go to Mark chapter 4 and verse 38 Mark gives a little more details uh, interestingly, even though Mark's the, the uh, uh, shorter of the Gospels, Mark says, and he was in the hinder part of the sh ship asleep on a pillow. A pillow. Who's that guy that makes all those pillows? Well, he had the my pillow for sure. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It didn't say he was asleep on a wet pillow, did it? Now, I used to have a water bed. Years ago, when I was in college and when I was in our early days, uh, we had a, a wonderful water bed. I got it long. When I was a teenager, it was one of the first things I bought on credit was a water bed from Heilig Myers. And at th that season of my life, I loved a water bed. Something happened to us. I got older. It just wasn't doing the job that it needed to be done. Uh, so I needed a solid bed to sleep on. Uh, but let me tell you, that water bed was wonderful as long as the water didn't get in you. Amen? <laughs> And I tell you what, that water and those waves covered the boat, but it didn't touch his pillow. Amen? Oh, somebody say amen. And they awake him. Let's go back to that, Mark 4 and 38. And they awake him and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? That's a good question. It's really an unnecessary question. But it's a question you've asked. Don't get mad at them. When you've been in the storm, when people have really hurt you, when you have really gone through some battles, you can, Lord, do you care what's going on here? Don't you see it? Listen, he cares about you intimately. He knows the number of the hair upon your head. He cares about you affectionately. He says, he that touches you touches the apple of my eye. He cares about you passionately. He is moved the passion of the Christ. He cares about you continually, every minute of every second of every day. He cares about you personally. The three Hebrew boys, he showed up. In their desperation, they went to the right source. Did you know you could go to the wrong source when a storm comes up? Did you know people go to drugs, alcohol? Well, I've had the worst time in my you know, country music songs. You know, I've been, I've been drinking my blues away and, and uh, just good old boys. And, and uh, my girlfriend left me and the, the, the one I have won't. You know, so uh, the, I'm, 
loving you but leaving her. I don't know, you know, those songs. <laughs> no wonder they drink, amen. It's, it's depressing, amen. It's depressing. I mean, it would drive people to drink. You don't need to go to the wrong source, amen. You don't need to go to the horoscope, Facebook, social media, call up a BFF. Uh, friend, you need, in your desperation, you need to go to where the disciples went. They went to the master. Can you put your hand together and praise him tonight? <laughs> not alcohol, not drugs, not uh, one relationship after another. They went to Jesus. They called out to him. Cry out to God in your storm. And folks, there's a storm in our country. There's a storm in our society. There's a storm we are facing. And now's the time for us like these disciples to cry out to God and call out mightily on the name of Jesus. Uh, he is not asleep. He is alive and he's awake. And, and he responds when we call out to him. Uh, listen, if there's a storm in your country, pray. If there's a storm in your family, pray. If there's a storm in your body, pray. If there's a storm in your church, pray. If there's a storm in your marriage, pray. And I'll tell you, when, he show, when you uh, begin to pray, he will show up uh, and he will show off uh, which brings me to my last point uh, we've saw the destination we've seen the desperation and now that they've prayed uh, we're about to see a demonstration amen a show and tell amen Hallelujah. Declare victory over that storm. Declare victory over that storm through prayer. Look at God's demonstration. Look, look at Matthew chapter 8 and verse 26. And he saith unto them, Why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled. Say that with me. What manner of man? is this that even the winds and the sea obey him amen look at psalm 89 and 9 jesus did exactly what he already said he was going to do thou rulest the raging sea when the waves arise you steal them he had already said it it's a prophecy jesus fulfilled scripture that's why one of the reasons we know he is the Messiah. Now, I want to point out something to you as I begin to come to a close. I want to point out Matthew 8 and 24 and Matthew 8 and 26. And sometimes you might miss this, but it says, Matthew 8, 24, there arose a great storm. Say that with me. There arose a great storm. That's a fact. That's the x-ray. That's the situation you got to face tomorrow morning. That's the F3 that came through Nash County. There arose. We're not denying that. But go two verses down. Mm -mm -mm. Woo, I feel it. <laughs> and he, he said, and then why are you fearful, oh, you little faith? Now, what's the next three words? Then, say it with me. Then he arose. So stay right there, Sister Darnell. At first scripture says, there arose a great storm. Then this scripture says, then he arose. I'll tell you, let the storm rise. Let the heathen imagine a vain thing, and the kings of the earth laugh. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in derision. Let the storm arise, but let the church arise. Hallelujah. Let the king arise. Let faith arise in this house. I'll tell you, the storm has arisen, but so has the Savior. Up from the grave he arose like a mighty triumph over his foes. Uh, he lives forever. Praise his name. Uh, he's alive. Uh, he's alive. Uh, he arose. <laughs> because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Lift your hand and sing it. Because he lives, all fear it's gone because I know oh, he holds the future and life is worth the living just 
Because he, I said he arose. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Listen, a puddle of water cannot frustrate the omnipotence of God. In the Greek, when it said, Jesus said, peace be still, did you know that the Bible was written in Greek? And not just any Greek, Brother Philip, it was written in the street Greek, the common, we use the term koinonia, we get the word coin from, and the word coin means something that is common because everybody has a penny, you know, everybody has dimes, nickels, and quarters. And you know that when you take up an offer and you see them, amen. <laughs> Koinonia was the street language. And so really, I've done, I, I, man, it just got me so excited. When he said, peace be still, you know, it's King James, peace be still. Really, in the Greek, if you translate it the way it really was written, you know what Jesus did? He got on the bow of the ship and he said this, hush. Now, I know some of you moms out there, <laughs> there comes that moment <laughs> when that child <laughs> has gone too far, <laughs> and you tell them, now be quiet, <laughs> you tell them, stop bothering me, <laughs> and then finally you look at them and you say, hush, <laughs> and you mean business, don't you? <laughs> oh, he's my father, <laughs> and he didn't want that storm picking on his children anymore. And he said, hush. And I believe there is a divine hush coming to your storm. The African-American preacher said it this way. Listen, he, they could say it so, so eloquently. He said, that old storm like a raging beast got hit by a tranquilizer and fell dead. <laughs> oh, Psalm 68, verse 1. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Listen, Jesus didn't come to take you under. He said, you're going over. He came to take you over. Let God arise. Declare victory. How does God arise? I'll tell you how he arise, through prayer, through fasting, through faith. And then he arises through what? Praise. Praise him in that storm. Praise him in that valley. Praise him in the ICU. The ICU, that's right. Next time you're in a hospital and you get put in the ICU, just turn it around on the devil and say, Lord, I see you. Amen. Uh, he is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let God arise. Hush to the storm. Here going over to the other side. Give him a mighty hand of praise here tonight. Count meeting. Oh, hallelujah. Are you going through that storm tonight? I close with this. I heard about a little boy playing with his ship on the edge of a lake. The boat got away from him and went too far out that his little arms couldn't reach. The little fellow got ingenious. He got some rocks, and he threw the rocks beyond the boat, and the ripples of the waves actually moved the boat back to his arms. So let me tell you, God will never waste a storm. And if you'll let it, those storms can cause you to come to Jesus and be closer to him. And you can snuggle up and y'all can enjoy the journey. Would you stand with me tonight? Because he lives, Pastor, I can face Come on up. Tomorrow. tomorrow. The storm is being calm. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. 
coming through the storm. You're declaring victory. All fear is gone because I know He holds the future. Oh, yes, He does. Hallelujah. I life is You're coming through. Just Declare. Come on. I want you to think about your storm right now. I want you to lift your hand and declare victory over your storm. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is Son, God sent His Son. They call Him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. Church. 